Welcome to Hoko Polizzo's Poetry Moment. When Taihimba just reads his verse, it's like watching Cirque du Soleil with words. Jess read for Hoko Polizzo in 2017, just after he'd won the Pulitzer Prize for his collection, Olio. He stood at the podium and flashed on screen his poems and pictures of the minstrel musicians that were the subjects of his compositions. In a demonstration of poetic acrobatics, Jess then proceeded to read his lines forwards, backwards, diagonally, and circularly. The poems in his collection tell the stories of Black musicians from the minstrel tradition, the main form of theater in America from 1830 until 1910. White actors and singers put on blackface and performed degrading caricatures of Black people. But some Black artists made their creative living in minstrel shows. In his book, Olio, Jess writes the stories of performers such as Henry Box Brown, Edmonia Lewis, Ciceretta Jones, Scott Joplin, the Fisk Jubilee Singers, and the conjoined McCoy Twins. These were talented magicians, opera soloists, pianists, and gospel singers working in the only venues available to them. Jess seeks to give full voice to the artist's stories instead of making insulting two-dimensional representations of the performers as the minstrel shows did. The pages in his book, Olio, can be ripped out, Jess explained, and the pages curled into cylinders or Mobius strips. The poems still make sense. The reader is invited to deconstruct the book, Jess explains. The pages are perforated, so the pages easily tear out of the books. So you can use the poems in their form to manipulate them. You're going from a two-dimensional form to a three-dimensional composition in much the same way that many of the performers were working in a two-dimensional strata and had to take the received instrument and bend it. In this week's Hoko Polizzo Poetry Moment, Jess reads Blind Tom Plays On, the last in a sonnet series about Tom Wiggins, born blind, autistic, and into slavery. By age four, he had become a savant piano player with uncanny talent. Wiggins could imitate sounds, repeat reams of speech, and compose and play music. James Bethune and his family owned Tom for most of his life and profited to the tune of nearly a million dollars from his talents, with Tom receiving only subsistence from them. Jess's poems pay tribute to Wiggins' strange genius and to the mother that protected him as much as she could from slavery and from the people who sought to exploit him. One of Jess's other sonnets in the Blind Tom series ends with the following lines, starting with the metaphor of teeth as piano keys. Jangle up its teeth until it can tell our story the way you would tell your own. The way you take darkness and make it moan. Who am I to deny this world? This gift of music storming through me. It howls out my fingers when I reach into God's mouth of piano, grabbing fistfuls of sun with each song. 
It spins me in circles, surrounds me in starshine, mounts my head, hands, and heart till I tell it what it wants. Tell it how we are all one wave of notes in the dark gospel of the universe. Can't you hear the chorus of moonlight? Can't you see the way each note shines? It's all right here, just beneath the skin, like something I seem to remember. The sound of my mother crying, how her hands danced across me, free flying.